Welcome to the Church of St. Stephen Downsview. Sunday, July 18th, 2021. Special Announcement From July 18th to September 5th, we will merge our pre-recorded and live stream worship. We need your feedback. In September, we want to be ready to welcome post-pandemic life. Today, call or message us by phone or WhatsApp at the church phone number. 416-241-4639 or email the parish office or leave a comment on the live stream replay on YouTube or Facebook. In today's video you will hear the following pre-recorded video clips included in the live stream. First reading by Erica Martin. Second reading by Marvel Odlum. Prayer of Intercession by Beverly Brown. Now let's join Father Reverend Vernal Savage as he leads today's worship. Good morning. It's good to see you all here this morning. I'll invite you all to stand as we begin our worship on the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, I give you thanks. We give you thanks that as we come into your sanctuary, we know we are not able to please you without you. So be with us as we worship and glorify your name. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. We'll now have our processional hymn.
of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Stand and let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scriptures. A reading from the book of Second Samuel 7, 1 through 14a. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus said the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar. Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people, Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from, your, from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that 
they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I'll be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The Word of the Lord. As we remain seated, uh, we'll say the psalm. I'll recite the psalm for you. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my, my law and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, if his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their transgressions with a rod and their iniquities with the lash. But I will not take my love from him, nor let my falls, my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore, like the moon, the abiding witness in the sky. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, 
that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The Word of the Lord gradual him gradual him Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of Christ. Thank you.
Let us pray, standing. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Almighty God, that you have created us as temples for your Holy Spirit. Grant that as we reflect upon your word, we may so see your vision of your kingdom and live to your glory of your name and fulfill in that our vocation. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So it's good to be here and uh, um, from um, standing that about his dad and we express, I, well, I'm happy to assist in that regard. I'm the Reverend Vernon. Uh, a special thing for St. Stephen's. Uh, uh, Phil did a year. So I love I loved the congregation. I want to uh, let me say Um, so with these three printers, do you know that they have three printers that can talk? Oh, I didn't know of that. I, I kind of got some. A day, do a couple, uh, a two-bedroom or so house. And um, the point of it, it it's, I think, is a company in Germany was doing that. And there are various other companies around. And the point of it, however, is to assist. It, it, it would go a far way in alleviating the housing problem. Uh, many people right now, I, I'm sure many of you are aware, Toronto and the, the, the mayor of Toronto, um, John Tory, has worked with the federal and the provincial governments to provide accommodation. Is accommodation that important? It's a rhetorical question. That's a rhetorical question. Is accommodation important? Accommodation, homes, houses, somewhere to dwell, that you can go in and you can relax, and as some people say, is there, is the, is the, um, what do you call it, their kingdom, their, 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 that's their castle, and so on. It's critical, eh? And there's been research to speak to the fact that one of the problems that impact families is the extent to which that there's the lack of housing or dwelling or homes or their castle. And the fact as well that one of the things that impact children in a huge way is the extent to which that they, some of them have to move around. Some people live out of, on, in living rooms and so on. Where am I going with all of this? David decided that after he was comfortable, and you read the Samuel reading, it speaks that when David felt he was comfortable, he decided that he was going to build a house for the Lord. And, and as, as, as what happened, David is favored by God. And what he, he said it to Nathan, and Nathan the prophet says to David, go and do it because the Lord is with you. So then afterwards, in the night, the Lord said to Nathan, no, 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 no. Please go and tell my servant, no, 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 no. You will not build a house for me. You will not build a house for me. Yes, but what you can tell him is what I have done. I took you from being a shepherd and put, put you to be king of my people, my chosen people. And of course, I'm paraphrasing. But what God is establishing there is a couple of things. In, in, uh, and after his rituals, Samuel, you begin to realize God promises um, David a few things despite he's telling him don't build any temple for him. God promises him, him a perpetual royal line. And he said a son will build a temple. 
his son will build a temple. And of course, you know, Solomon was the one who did that. And a son will be counted as God's son. So one, he'll have a perpetual royal line, the David lineage. Secondly, a son will build a temple. And secondly, a son will be, be um, counted as God's son. And thirdly, or fourthly, and a son who will be raised up. And in the Greek, it, it say, when, it, when it says raised up, it means resurrected. So all these four promises God makes, despite telling him that don't build the temple. <laughs> um, I would say I'm still favored in that respect. It is still important. It's, it's critical. So what we have happening then is the readings seem to be um, speaking to the kingdom of God and how significant that is. Because Ephesians reading speaks to that as well. In the last verse or so, it speaks to the fact that of, of the kingdom of God. Why is it so important? The kingdom of God is critical. It is established by the people of God. And as God sanctions it, it is built up through our vocation as we live out our call in ministry. As you heard my initial prayer when we started, I was saying, or even at, at the pulpit just before I started um, the message, was speaking about us fulfilling our vocation in God. Our vocation is critical. Some people have a vocation to plant flowers. Some people have a vocation to be soldiers. Some people have a vocation to be policemen. Some people have a vocation to be doctors, lawyers, and continue, accountants, administrators, and I could continue, but I, I'll leave it there. There's so much of them, realtors, so on and so forth. So in fulfilling that vocation, we are enabled by this concept that Ephesians start to touch on that is in the terms of the building of the kingdom and the temple of God. And as that temple is built, and this is another critical point that arises from the reading as I jump now to the gospel reading. As that temple is built, within that temple, within that place, within that house of God, is what we have in the Mark's reading, where it speaks to, first of all, the feeding of the 5,000. And then in the latter section, it speaks to the other issues. But I wanted to touch on more on the, well, the healing in Genesaret of how many different persons and so on. But I wanted to touch, first of all, on the fact that because there is a temple, then that temple that person, that living temple. So God did a miraculous thing. He changed it from a building. He changed it from, and these are the, what you'd call the second temple people listening to the Samuel reading was at about that time when you look in some of the literature, the Qumran and so on, that the, the Jewish people, um, their writings, it speaks to these people it being, they are the second temple people. And so what God moves the temple of, of holiness where he resides in this building of temple, of, uh, of holiness, this building, the sanctuary of holiness, to now reside with, uh, sorry, I don't want to give away that question. So let me ask it. This one is not a rhetorical question. So where he, does, he resides now? So, sorry? In us. Thank you. So that was, that was easy, right? So God, Father, we believe upon the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now resides in us. I, 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 can I tell you, I could keep repeating that for uh, how many months. It's, it may not be fully understood even for myself going to seminary and all these other things, still don't fully understand it. 
that God, I believe upon God, and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And as a result of that, I can bless, bless, you can bless. People, strangers can come to our house and they are always fed. So yes, the, the reading of the 5,000, Jesus blesses them because Jesus resides in us. And then what, what else happens? Oh my, I'm, I'm, lest I forget and leave that out. We pray for others. We lay our hands on those close to us, pray for others even in a, in a virtual space. And we pray for them and they experience healing. We see miracles, and, and in time, I, I know you go back to anointing, but the church is getting there. We are getting there. Now that most people have gotten inoculations um, with a vaccine it, in time, most of us, we will get there with doing anointing. We, I, I go to people's homes, I, and we, we anoint. I anoint my family, my children. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, giving thanks that his son who is resurrected, that resides with him and governs, is in the power of those words I speak and my belief. And my belief is, you could call it my beloved. I believe, I beloved God. And as I do that, I, yes, Mark's gospel becomes alive there and then. And then when... But, People hear of a few things and so on. We gather, we have prayer meetings, we sing together, and we notice that. Okay. And I will spread some water too. <laughs> and we sing, and we gather together, and we share. And as we sing, people are healed and restored to wholeness. Because within us resides Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I keep repeating that because for me it also was a discovery. <laughs> Not too, well, it was seminary time, I think, or somewhere there. Um, it was a discovery. Not when I went to seminary, I had a dream. So I, I won't go into the, the details of that. But somehow God chose to come and knock us in our head and conquer and say, boy, you know, uh, you, you, keep, you guys keep putting me in a box. You know, and then you, you recognize how powerful and how awesome this God is. So indeed, the gospel message this morning is that this temple that he has raised up is residing all these temples. Let me say it like that. As we gather together, yes, corporate worship is critical. We come together, there's something about it. And we sing songs and we give glory to God and we celebrate and we have Eucharist. We gather at the table. We feed together. And then we go from here and the temple still is out there. The, the temple is at your home. The temple is at your work. Wherever you work, the temple is in the gatherings that you gather in. The temple is in all the bubbles. And as we do so, so God comes alive to many, and people begin, people see, people understand, they appreciate the miraculous power of who God is. So yes, indeed, a home, a temple, a dwelling is important. It is so critical because what resides in the temple is, is what is the key thing. Because as we understand we know that indeed, God, we are the temple of God. And as he resides in us, we are invited to go forth and to speak the word of God. And when we speak, we speak life. And, okay, so let me put another little side to it as well. We are invited as well to guard our words, guard the things we say. Because when we speak as the children of God, so it becomes, it, 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 it manifests, manifests itself. So we are invited, importantly, to do so. 
So within this COVID thing and all these excitement and deaths and so on and so forth, and I, and I won't go into the statistics, but just to say, is it that we have had less deaths or more deaths? That's a question you can all examine and seek out for yourself. Oh, thank you, Arthur. And in understanding what is going on with COVID, for many Christians, it means that we get what? Closer to God. We sit with him. And we ask him, Lord, what is going on here? And he guides us. And we see miracles. We pray for those who are suffering. And even though we can't visit people, we go and call them. Because that, would what, that is what God would ask us to do. So yes, indeed, we are fortunate. This God has enabled us to be such powerful people. I, I, I'm saying it like that. We're such powerful people. Such a wonderful thing. And I'm inviting you to take hold, to take hold of that, to, to meditate, to chew on those, that reality that you are the temple of God. You are the, like oh, we have the Aubrey there where we, 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 we keep consecrated wafer, um, wafers and the wine and consecrated oil to anoint and consecrated oil as well for baptism when we anoint. We, you, that dwelling, that place, you are the living one. As you can go out and you can anoint and you can enable, you can speak life. As the Proverbs speak, talk about the words fitly spoke, spoken is better than silver and gold. So words are important. And of course, you know where the word is derivative from. The Logos. And the Logos became flesh. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm trying to invite you, like many Christians in Jesus' days and our days now, that we are the people of God. We are the children of God. And when we see all these the, if you watch too much of CNN and all these other stations, you get depressed. Because all, they, they, they don't have a gospel message to share with you. As a matter of fact, look on it, what, what they were saying about the lab, where the disease came from, from the, um, the lab. That anybody who said anything about the, it, that the COVID was manufactured in a lab, well, it was a disease, but they modified it or enhanced it. One year ago, if you said that, you're an idiot. Who was saying that? CNN and the other news networks, right? And now people are saying that, no, it look, it's really appeared that way. We are having variants upon variants upon variants and so on. And of course, we are knowing that the Chinese government did not cooperate to provide information as to those people who got sick in 2019 November. Those are truths. The networks don't necessarily tell you the truth. I, I learned that. I learned that the hard way. But I learned as well that I need to ask the Holy Spirit to guide me. Look on what happens with, with, with um, we, we talk about dwelling. People came here and live, and they came and dwell in Canada. And now we're finding grace for the people who hosted us. We are finding grace for 700 and odd children, 100 and odd children. At Kamloops, 250 odd. Come on. We need to understand as children of God, these things are unacceptable. But I will not continue much further than this, than to say we need to understand who we are in the context of the world that calls something wrong one day, right the next, next day, get, they get up another day and they call it wrong again or right again. No, we don't need that. We are the people of God. We are, I, our identity is in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the press can't tell us who we are. God tells us, and the Holy Spirit. And as we proclaim and engage together, we go out in the world 
and proclaim this gospel. So my brothers and sisters, please, the world needs it. This year, one of the, the, the kind of sad thing is how many people are committing suicide. And when I go and I sit with someone and I just pray with them, and I ask them about what they understand about this Jesus, somehow it heals them. Is it that we are not opening our mouths to speak the gospel? So yes, when you go to someone else's dwelling, when you are in your own dwelling, speak the gospel. Speak the word of God. Because nothing else gives more life and lasts longer than what you can see. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we affirm our faith in the words, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll now have the prayers of the people. You may sit or kneel as you are able. O God, merciful and just, O God, kind and compassionate, O God, forever faithful for your own name's sake, we pray for the world Christ came to save. We pray for the kingdom you are bringing through Christ. Bless the church, the body of Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, so that our strength is renewed like the eagles. Then send us out to proclaim the good news that in Jesus Christ there is newness of life. In the Anglican Church in Canada, we pray for the Most Reverend Greg Carr Wilson, Archbishop, and for the clergy and people of the Diocese of Calgary. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for Reverend Prima Samuel, assistant to the bishop and the staff of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. In our own Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Rwanda, for its bishops, clergy and people. We pray for all who are weary from hard labor, especially for those who are not fairly paid, for those who work in dangerous places, for those trapped in slavery, break yokes of oppression and bonds of bitterness. We pray for those now in weakness of body, mind, or spirit. 
May they know the power and strength of your care for the creature you have made and redeemed. We pray in a special way for the following members of our congregation and their caregivers. Alton, Courtney, Carol, Thelma, Maureen, Joe, George, Clifton, Kathleen, Reuben, Nellie, Andrew, Carmen, Rita, Dorette, Felicia, Fitzroy, Ian, Pat, Paul, Ethel, Joan, Doreen, Rima, Hyacinth, and Pauline. We pray for those who have asked the prayers of this congregation, especially Thelma Chasto, Evelyn Greenwich, Ruth Lynn Hoyt, Yabo Ogundiran, Diane Bissessar, Joyce Welcome, the Figuera family, Collis Edwards and mother, Sonia Blair, Charles McAllister, Valda and Sarita Domingo, Maria Walters, Florence Mogbai, Ruth Vern John, Diane Denny, Alyssa, Thomas, Latoya, and Athena. Hear our prayers for healing and peace as we intercede for those now on our hearts and minds. We pray for all who serve on behalf of others, especially for those who care for the sick, elderly and dying, for those who fight fires, enforce just laws, serve in the military, for those who hold public office, build up all people in peace and freedom. We pray for the ministry of our Saints Cafe and its outreach to the poor, hungry and homeless within our community. We pray for our coordinator, volunteers and all who support this work week by week. We pray for all who receive meals support and Christian friendship through this program. Grant that your name may be glorified in all that we do and in the lives of all whom we are privileged to serve. We pray for those who visit us week by week, for those now gathered virtually for worship. Meet them now even in their area of need draw to this community of faith, children, youth, and families. Grant that our worship and our gathering may be transformed by your risen life, such that all may encounter you. We pray for ourselves, for this congregation of St. Stephen Downsview, and for each member, that we will be faithful, especially in times of temptation, that our diseases will be healed, so that we have strength to serve others, that our love for one another and you grow even deeper. Make us into a holy temple in the Lord. Build us spiritually into a dwelling place for God, into your kingdom, O Holy Trinity. Amen. Send a sim, uh, symbol and peace, uh, peace, uh, you know. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace. We now have the offer to him. Just a closer walk.
Let us pray. O God, accept our praise and thanksgiving. Help us in all we do to offer ourselves as a true and living sacrifice through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may sit or kneel as you feel most comfortable. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. O Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and, gi and gave it to you. G he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, This, take this, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer all sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, your gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. True Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. some reminders you see some red I'll stand there and you have all been worshipping here hopefully you want to give the instructions <laughs> no problem right? uh, but, but so all baptized Christians are invited up but please follow the instructions for the COVID protocols I will only be serving you wafers wafers is considered a full, the full sacraments at any rate Okay, so let us, let us feast.
At this time, I'll invite those who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, wedding anniversaries, some other anniversary. Okay. What is it? Birthday? Oh, it's just time. Okay.
as we say the prayer after communion. And if you wish, you can join in with me. Oh God, as we are strengthening these holy mysteries, may our lives be a continual offering, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is a blessing, eh, too? Okay. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may as we understand and hear the Word of God become a blessing as it dwelt the temple of God meets others who have not never ever experienced Him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated for the announcements. And, uh, okay, another warden is coming forward to give the announcement. And uh, once again, let me welcome everyone who is here today in the sanctuary, as well as those who are streaming online. And uh, we all look forward to the day when we'll all gather again and celebrate. But we, we are, we'll do it virtually for now. We can't see everybody who is online. We do have an idea based on the number of connections, but it's good that we can celebrate nonetheless in this time. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just a few announcements to bring to your attention. Um, so first of all, I would like to thank Reverend Savage for being with us this morning. Um, we look forward to having him with us again next week, Sunday. So just to give your attention to a few announcements. So beginning today, the pre-recorded worships will no longer be a separate playlist for those of you who are watching online. Um, so as you watch the, the new recordings, please share your feedback with us to help ensure that our online worships are working well. Um, we do have a pause on Bible study, Sunday school, and youth talk for the summer. We will be resuming all of these activities on September 5th, so if you just want to take a note of those things in your calendar. Beginning this week until September 6th, we will be joining morning prayers with St. Paul's Lamarou, um, while prayers with Father Theodore will resume on September 7th. So morning prayer with Father Theodore will resume on September 7th. In the meantime, we will be joining with St. Paul's Lamarou for their morning prayer. And an email with the connection link has been emailed out as well. If you don't have it, please contact Greg to get that information for those of you who will be signing on to morning prayer. Just a gentle reminder to register for in-person services by the Thursday before the Sunday uh, for the 10 a.m. service. And just a note um, to keep in mind, we are having one service at 10 a.m. for July and August, and we'll resume the two services in September. And a new, announce, a a new baby announcement. So I'm very excited to share with you all this morning that on Wednesday, July 14th, Eloise Uchuku was born to Emeka and Stephanie Uchuku. So congratulations to Emeka and Stephanie on the birth of their new baby girl. And I'm also going to be sharing with you the names of, ind of the individuals that are celebrating birthdays this week. So for those that are celebrating birthdays this week, we have Brian Murray, who is celebrating today, actually. Tomorrow, July 19th, we have Blessing Omer and Maureen Boyce. And on July 20th, Dion Alicock and Aliyah Seeley will both be celebrating their birthdays. So happy birthday to everyone who is celebrating their birthday this week. And um, a note from Father Theodore. So as you know, Father Theodore's father um, passed away last week Sunday on July 18th. Father Theodore conveys his deep and profound gratitude for the overwhelming outpouring of love and expressions of prayerful support and condolences from the parish. So I just wanted to share that with you on behalf of Father Theodore. So those are all the announcements that we have for this week. 
enjoy your week and um, I pray that it will be a lovely week for everyone. Thank you. Just before we have the recessional hymn, I'm going to invite you all to stand and let us say a prayer for, for Theodore and his family and all his siblings at this challenging time. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, our brother Theodore's father passed away. He was hoping to have been with him before he actually died because he was ailing badly. God of mercy and grace, we know that Theodore does mourn as one without hope. But nonetheless, we, we grieve with him. We, uh, we support him in his journey and his challenges at this time. So Lord, uphold them because you are the God of consolation and comfort. Grant this, Lord, that they may be always aware of your affirming love through these challenging and difficult times. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have our recessional hymn. <laughs>
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be to God.